Welcome back to the hall. Uh, we will have uh, now the public lecture, and we are extremely fortunate to have Dr. Mashelkar giving this public lecture. To this audience, as well as audience elsewhere, in true sense, Dr. Mashelkar doesn't need introduction. It's not a cliche, it's really a fact, because he is one of the architects of modern science in India, contributed in many, many ways, which have touched many of us in different, uh, at different fora. So we are very fortunate that he is talking to us this evening. Uh, so we all know that how he uh, started his career uh, from NCL, went on to become Director General, where he played a very major, major role in completely revamping and uh, putting CSIR in a different mode in his uh, uh, stint as Director General, uh, was associated with almost all national and many international policies for almost 40 years, and has made uh, many things which have made uh, science, uh, working uh, to do science easier in India. So he has contributed in many ways, which are not often written up or uh, known to people, but those who have been influenced know that he has played a very decisive role in uh, what they call uh, doing science easy or some such catchword in uh, modern jargon. But he has been doing this for the last almost uh, 25, 30 years. He has a very, very distinguished career. And uh, Dr. Shivram already warned me that if I introduce him, I will run out of time. And I take your advice so seriously that I will only mention three or four things. First, uh, uh, that he has all the honors you can ever think of. Uh, fellows of many, many academies, fellows of, uh, fellow of Royal Society London, foreign fellow of the US, US National Academy of Science, and US, US National Academy of Engineering. Very few people in the world who have the distinction of being a fellow of both science and engineering. So that can already give you the breadth of his interest and contributions to science and technology. In his mind, I don't think it distinguishes between science and technology because I have heard him showing very detailed non-Newtonian equations when he was in his youth once in ISC when he said unusual or out of box data points which motivates him to look for exciting science. I have heard him from that time to other times when he has really talked of technology transfer, India on the map to innovation and so on. So extremely fortunate for us to have him. And uh, now uh, I'll invite uh, Dr. Mashelkar to give his public lecture, which is flashed here. Dr. Mashelkar, pleasure to have you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, for those uh, very kind words. It's an honor and a privilege uh, to speak to you today uh, on a subject that has been very close to my heart, innovation. Why innovation? Well, there is no option. If you don't innovate, you don't compete. If you don't innovate, you don't grow. If you don't innovate, you don't have a place in the sun. If you don't innovate, you can't create an inclusive society. And therefore, innovation is very critical. And particularly in the Indian context, we have to look at innovation differently. And that innovation is the assured innovation, as I say. And I'll explain to you the meaning of assured innovation. Uh, this is the first lecture where I'm using this terminology, by the way. Now, if you, I, I, I recollect uh, the Jayadi Tata Corporate Leadership Lecture Award that I had given in 1998, which is uh, almost two decades ago. And while ending that speech, I had said, finally, 1999 should be the year where we should launch a powerful national innovation movement to propel us into the next millennium. The I in India should not stand for imitation 
and inhibition. It must stand for innovation. The IIN IIT must stand for innovation. The IIN industry, the IIN CSR must stand for innovation. The IIN every individual Indian must stand for innovation. That has been my thoughts, my commitment over several decades. And I continue uh, with this. Now you will say, if uh, innovation is the key, where does India stand? Now, if you look at the global innovation index, which is some measure of innovation, you will find India's innovation rank is uh, both bad news as well as a good news. All my lectures, by the way, will have bad news, but also will have a good news. So here is the bad news. If you see our rank among 140 odd nations, in 2011, it was 62. You will feel with greater investments and so on and so forth, we will improve. 64, 66 the following year, 60, 76 the following year, and 81 the following year. What is happening? Are we not pumping money? Are, are, are there uh, not uh, effervescent things, speeches, actions, and so on and so forth? And despite, why are we falling? Well, where you are depends upon how fast you are running compared to your competitor. Our competitors are running much faster. But having given that bad news, here is the good news. From 81, we have jumped to 66 and then to 60. All right, so that's a reversal. And that's a great news. But does it mean that within two years, we have suddenly become better innovators? No. I'll tell you the truth of the matter. This Global Innovation Index has an international advisory board. I happen to be on that board. And I told them that, uh, you know, there is a saying that what is counted doesn't count, and what counts is not counted. I said, I looked at their indicators. They were easily measurable parameters, all right, which were directly linked to technology, like patterns, this, that, and the other. I said, innovation goes much beyond that. I remember when we did the Mars Orbiter mission, I said $74 million as against $671 million. Where does it count? I talked about several innovations that India has done in what I call as a non-technological innovation, not technological innovation, which have been game changing. And you will see that. And that is where they started changing the indicators, by the way. All right? So in 2016, they added certain indicators which has improved our rank, and 2017, some further indicators, and there is still a talk that is going on. The Director General of WIPO was here in Rashtrapati Bhavan. We had a program, and at that time, we had detailed discussions on improving this. But still, whatever be the situation, giving the same indicators, basically, we are falling, and we are not up there. China, by the way, uh, has uh, been around 25 now, basically, at the top. So we have to do something. What is our problem? So let us understand the difference between invention and innovation. What we do in a laboratory, create a prototype, etc., etc., is an invention. There's a proof of concept. But in order to go from invention to innovation, innovation is making it work in the field. Innovation is the journey from mind to marketplace. And I think that is where India's challenge is. India has had science technology innovation policies. And I'm very happy uh, to hear that yesterday we had the science uh, uh, policy uh, discussion. That's wonderful. In fact, this 1958 science policy resolution, if you read it, Sivaram, it will be impossible to change even a line, by the way. This is the most impressive document that I have seen. And I'm very happy that in the book it has been sort of captured so that we can see what was written those many years ago. Then, of course, we realized technology is important. 83, we created that. 2003, we said, no, not just science, not just technology, as Professor Sudh was saying, science and technology. And then, of course, we realized that from there, we have to move to innovation. OK? Now, currently, what is the situation? We don't have a formal science, technology, innovation policy statement or policy as yet. Although there are missions like Atal Innovation Mission, etc., there are several exists. I'm quite sure that the government one day 
will come out with uh, the new policy because the word has changed. Why new? Not because it is fashionable to do that. The word has dramatically changed in the last uh, five years or so. So we need one. What do I see as India's problem? As I said, journey from mind to marketplace. We are great thinkers, great ideas. But converting those ideas finally into products and services into the marketplace has been the challenge. Uh, we, of course, have seen this, the ministers launching inventions. I wouldn't call them innovation because innovation is a complete journey, by the way. It's a product in the marketplace. Like Simputer, and I will talk about Simputer a little later. It was something absolutely fantastic. It was launched in 2001. I was associated in launching this Mobilis, as you can see here. And then, of course, Akash launch. But they're all launches. What we really need is this. It has to be in the hand of individuals, all of you. So this is something that is missing. So what is the challenge in this journey? That is what we are going to actually talk about. So if at all we have to change the science, technology, innovation policy frameworks, I would say, yeah, these policies have been there. But 2018, I would like to propose a policy which I can describe in one word. Assured. Now, what is that assured? First, A is affordable. Creating affordability requires a genius, by the way. Not 10% that is incremental, but tenfold. That requires a genius. And I'll explain to you how that has to be done. Second is scalable. Not demonstrate it with 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people. We are a country of 135 crore. It has to touch the lives of everybody. Third is sustainable. Sustainable in three terms. First, economic. It can't be sustainable on the basis of the subsidies that the government gives. It has to be standalone. Environmentally, it has to be sustainable. We talk about something that is affordable, which are, uh, uh, b b b b uh, let us say, things which are not environmentally sustainable, although they are affordable, like pouches, plastic pouches. Right? That is not on. And socially acceptable. So otherwise, it cannot be sustainable if the society rejects it. So sustainability has a deep meaning. Then universal or user-friendly or maintenance-free. All right? Because then you can have a great scale. So as to say, otherwise, you get stuck. You create something for a village. Electronics was fat, and you can't do anything about it. Can we do something where there is no electronics, like paper-based diagnostics of George Whiteside's, which is as accurate as other diagnoses, where there is nothing uh, that is required. That requires innovation. Rapid speed. And we are talking about the delay in terms of the release of the funds. But that is just one, by the way. Speed, getting speed and doing it fast, really requires extreme innovation. And I'll explain to you how that happens. Excellence in technology. Now you say, come on. You are talking about affordable on one hand and excellent on the other hand. How can affordable excellence be there? Because what is affordable can't be excellent, and what is excellent can't be affordable. I'm sorry. One is absolutely wrong there. India has mastered that art of doing affordable excellence. And finally, distinctive, not me too not incremental, not imitation, all right? We cannot be an imitation society. We have to be an innovation society. And if you do not do it distinctive, you will not survive. That will not be sustainable. The two are linked, by the way. You have to displace your product yourself. If you don't do that, your competitors will do it. So that distinctiveness has to be understood in that perspective. How do we create that? That's the issue. I have five mantras, by the way, for creating Assured innovation, which is going to be a complete change in the way we do things. The first is from leapfrog to pole wall. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Second is jugad to systematic innovation. I'm not very proud when people call us a jugadu nation, by the way. I'm sorry. How do we do systematic innovation? Third is, I'm not a great believer in current best practice. Because if you are using that, you are copying somebody else's. How do we create? our next practices. Fourth, incremental to disruptive innovation. 
not 10 percent, tenfold. How do you do that? And not first to India, but first to the world. We are so happy. I'm first in Shukravar Pet, I'm first in Pune, I'm first in Maharashtra, I'm first in India. How do we become the first? And this is true for science. As somebody has said, only those people are remembered, those scientists are remembered who say the first word in science or the last word in science. All right? We have not done it often enough. Otherwise, we would have been very different. So this is a complete game change. That's why I'm using the word game change. All right? How do we do that? Is it possible to do that? I'll give you the confidence that it is. Now, where this, uh, uh, did this uh, uh, leaf frog to pole vault come? This came in the Innovation Council meeting. Uh, I chair a number of Innovation Councils, by the way. After I retired, which is 11 years, I've been involved with industry very deeply. So I chair you know, Reliance Innovation Council, Thermax Innovation Council, Persistence Innovation Council, KPIT Technology Innovation Council, Marico Innovation Council, so many of them. Because what one did in the government, basically one is trying to push innovation in, in industry. One of them is the Reliance Innovation Council. And there was a very interesting discussion there. What was that? You see the members, John Mary Lane, the Nobel laureate that you know, Bob Grubbs, the Nobel laureate that you know, George Whitesides, of course, you know, the highest cited scientist in the world. But the market cap of his companies is $30 billion plus. Saraswati and Lakshmi going together. Uh, Bill Hasseltine, you would know, Human Genome Science. Gary Hamill, C.K. Prahlad used to be a member. He's not. Uh, he is no more, as you know. And Mukesh himself is a member. That itself is an innovation, by the way, although he is the chairman of Reliance. And this is our 10th year of this council. And there, the discussions are always about looking into the future. We always remember, we begin our meeting by saying, uh, we will think only of the future because that is where we are going to spend the rest of our life. All right? And how do we actually, when we talk about, uh, by the way, uh, 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 any technology like Industry 4.0, when the rest of the world talks about Industry 4.0, we are only talking about Industry 5.0. Okay? So that is the council. So there we were once uh, we were talking about, and one said, uh, we must leapfrog. And I remember George saying something interesting. He asked me, do you know why the frog leaps? So I said, I have no idea. He said, because he's afraid of the predators. That is why he leaps. And you know what is the average he leaps? Around 4.6 feet. What is the maximum world record? Seven feet. So he said, do you want to do that because you're afraid you want to survive? And you want to go seven feet? Or do you want to pole vault? Where the size of the pole determines where you will reach, actually. All right? So that is how this uh, thing happened. And then we have, of course, a Reliance Innovation Leadership Center here in Pune, which was inaugurated about 10 years ago. And we started talking about how do we create innovation leadership, which will be able to pole vault. Pole vault means going beyond the reams of possibilities. And this is the program that we created. So out of our two and half lakh employees, there are around 25 who have been picked up who are, are capable of going beyond the rims of possibilities. All right? That is the special program that we uh, have today. Now, are we pole vaulting? You can see, for example, million GB per uh, month in terms of mobile data transmission or usage. Where were we? India was 200. U.S. 710, China 630, Japan 470, South Korea 180, okay? That was the change. This was exactly six months ago. Today, we are number one. Had we leapfrogged, we would have moved from the 155th position in which we were six months ago to maybe 100th. But we have pole vaulted to number one position. How did that happen? It was not just pumping money. There is a huge innovation as you will come to know later. So we have pole vaulted. And is this assured? I'll explain to you that it is assured. You look at the speed that we talk about and the scale that we talked about. Remember the two words, S, scalable, and R, rapid? Look at this. Uh, telephone took 50 years to reach 50 million users. Mobile took 12 years. 
YouTube took four years, Facebook took three years, Twitter took two years. Now, this is what we will be all sitting in the audience and admiring how they have done it. These records have been broken now by Reliance Geo, where they have done it in 83 days. How did they do that? Because onboarding a customer on something like this would take five days. Ajay, they did it in five minutes. Why? Because there was Aadhaar, there was mobile. That is how they could actually uh, reach that. That was the infrastructure, digital infrastructure, that was uh, uh, used, as a matter of fact, to sort of pole vault. Before Geo, after Geo, 4G Voltafone, $300 brought to $23 now it is available. In fact, effectively it is zero because you give 1,500 rupees and you take them back sort of later. That's the business model innovation. I'll talk about that a little later. So this is not affordable, not 10% less, not from 300 to 290, 23. Look at the data per GB cost, not $5, $0.1. And why is, of course, not $1.6, $0.00. Because Vice is free. The business model is such that Vice is given free as a matter of fact. That is a dramatic change that one makes. And most importantly, what I'm most happy about is that, you know, we used to take great pride in a missed call that was considered as an uh, Indian innovation. I'm sorry, I didn't take pride in that. Why? Because you did not pay for it. The telecom company that you're using paid for it. But you got the benefit. From there, we have come to free Vice call. And now a free video call, almost a free video call, because 10 rupees per GB. That means an old mother who has her son on the border can actually see him every day and talk to him for five minutes for just two rupees. That is the change that has taken place uh, in, in India now. And does it meet all the criteria? Of course. It is affordable. It has already scaled up. It is sustainable, it is user friendly, it's most rapid, excellence of technology, 4G LTE, you can't have better than that, and it is distinctive in terms of fashion model. Can we create such models? That's the point I'm actually trying to make. The problem you will find as I move along is that we can almost meet all the words excepting this SS. And SS, scalable and sustainable, actually determines whether you are successful or not, and why. We'll see that. Uh, let me move to the next Jugaad to systematic innovation. Because uh, we were short of resources, we always uh, thought of doing things by which practically with no resource we can achieve maximum. Okay? So Ajay, for example, you were there and you had to serve tea for five people and they wanted it at the same time. And you had no five people to sort of take them. Okay, uh, but take the T2. How do you do that? Like the T that we're taking just now. Nobody in the world finds a solution for that, but we have, just see. <laughs> that is Indian ingenuity. But what one is saying now is that move from this, because this is assured, but only A, affordable. The rest of the words are not here. Okay, how do we make it assured? So we have to move from Jugaad to systematic innovation. Just look at this. Mars Orbiter mission for $74 million as against 671, and both of us are circling the marks. The ingenuity was in the way we went to Mars, not because our costs of labor were low, and so on and so forth. Look at this, 104 satellites launched in a single, okay? That is almost like uh, the Chaiwala that you saw. Huh? Serving five customers at the same time, we served 104 customers at the same time. That is the Indian ingenuity. So if anybody asks me, what is India's comparative advantage? I say it is affordable excellence, basically, okay? Let's uh, see, for example, space has done it again and again, assured. Just look at Chandrayaan, all these. Look at Manglayaan, all these. That's why our space program is considered so successful, 104 satellites. Once again, all these. And therefore, assured is guaranteed. Let's move on 
to the next one, the best practice to next practice. Uh, in my mother's name, Anjani Mashelkar, I have created what is called as Anjani Mashelkar Inclusive Innovation Award. You know, I, I remember, uh, if, um, uh, although I was in Delhi, I used to spend my Saturday and Sunday, as Sivram knows, in the lab, basically, in, in Pune. So Friday night I would come, Sunday evening I will be going back. And whatever money I had uh, in my pocket, I would leave it with my mother. And I never asked her what she did about it. But uh, after she passed away, 17 November 2006, my daughter Shruti was adjusting her saris and she found all that money was there. And she had just left a note for me that you are a scientist, in Marathi of course she has written, uh, do something good for the poor, basically. So I had some prize money and other savings, I put that in and we created this Anjani Masirka Inclusive Innovation Award this is the seventh year. In that award, we don't give it to the best practice. We give it to the next practice. For example, Mishkin Hingewale, he created a rupees 10 test for hemoglobin, just five, dollar, uh, five rupees for an ECG test, and just dollar one for breast cancer screening. How did that happen? The best practice, of course, is you will lie down in 12 years and this, that, and the other. The next practice is this. You have something, I wish I had brought this here, I forgot. You have something, you put your two thumbs for 15 seconds, your sensor here, there are positions, and within three minutes, if you have downloaded an app called Sanket, which I have, your physician will get it, okay? Cost is just fine. So the way it goes is uh, uh, you create this, and actually the free mobile app, Sanket with thumbs and the ECG actually comes and you can send it uh, by uh, email. Has, does this meet the assured test? No. It had affordability. It had user friendliness because it was like using a thermometer. It was done, it does it rapidly within three minutes, no process. Excellence in technology is there. He was an electronics wizard by the way, Rahul who created it, it is distinctive. But has it scaled? Is it sustainable? No. Why? I'll come back to that. You know, that's why it's a great invention. The ministers or all of us will pose it, photograph, applause, following day newspaper reports. But if these two are not met, it doesn't help. Next one, Mishkin Ingawale. He actually said, uh, he saw that uh, women were dying of uh, anemia in villages. Why? Because their subcritical levels of hemoglobin were not detected in time. Why? Because uh, they wouldn't give the blood. Why? Because they thought they were something, giving something precious. So he said, why don't I do it non-invasively? Okay, and he found that nobody had done it. So he said, best practice is invasive with needles. Next practice is non-invasive, no needles. Cost is this, I'll reduce it to this. And he used high technology, photoplasmography, spectrophotometry, created an advanced software for photon scattering, and you can see this here. What has happened to it? Two SS are missing. Why? I'll come back to that. That's the story of Indian innovation, by the way. And then, of course, uh, the, uh, last year we gave this award to uh, a, a young man who said, that uh, for breast cancer, I will develop something. Uh, the best practice is invasive with mammography, non-invasive, no mammography, painful, painless, cost per scan, just one dollar, and requires specialists, no specialist. And he created that, his name is Mihir Shah. You can just see him here. And the way it works is that it's a low-cost tactile sensor that measures diffuse stiffness difference in real time, non-invasively, the elastic modelly and uh, the difference between uh, the malignant and non-malignant. It is ultra portable, accurate, minimal training, wireless, cloud connected. Again, you will ask, does it meet the assured criteria? You will see that it does. Because what they have done is that with GE Healthcare, about a month ago, they had a global partnership to make early detection and they will go to 25 countries. And here you can see uh, uh, that this now classifies 
as the assured this okay will be hugely sort of scaled up the next one is of course incremental to disruptive innovation incremental as i said is 10% disruptive is almost tenfold what is the difference between the two incremental is evolutionary whereas disruptive is revolutionary incremental is new to the company but this will be new to the world incremental is usually introduced by incumbents disruptive is usually introduced by new entrants the beauty with new entrants is that they meet that definition of innovator innovator is one who does not know it can be done can't be done whereas the companies who have mature business they always feel nothing else can be done it's a mindset issue here we just try to uh, create cost or feature improvements here creates unprecedented performance features and here just existing product services here is entirely new products services etc india i am afraid has been stuck on this have you seen anything that is revolutionary new to the world usually into do creating unprecedented performance features new product services with some exceptions i cannot say that this has happened how do we move into that that's the issue and that is where the beauty lies now there are 10 exponential technologies that are causing disruption first is internet of things artificial intelligence machine learning robotics process automation virtual augmented or mixed reality sensors 3d printing 3d visualization mobile internet and cloud big data analytics and blockchain these are the 10 by the way now what happens with these exponential technologies why do we call them exponential all of you know moore's law for example number of transistors doubles every 2 years so annual improvement rate is 41.4% so there is an exponential growth in transistors and exponential fall in the cost we all know that now such laws are prevalent in other thing like data storage there is what is called as crider's law the hard disk dollar per bit 50% down every 18 months so it is even faster than a moore's law digital imaging henry's law pixels per dollar 59% per year even faster than moore's law network capacity butters law of photonics there is somebody a young man who is working on photonics here in the audience anyone so somebody i met yeah you are you are working so you would know this law okay the dollar cost of transmitting a bit decreases by 50% every 9 months and of course lithium by uh, 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 iron batteries they are not reducing exponentially but substantially i think the most important point i want to make is that the technology cost curves as you can see they are steeply coming down previously ajay they used to take a long time now they come down very steeply so what is working is other disruptions like open disruption open source software like android open data like climate.com open content like safecast open knowledge like udacity coursera open source development uh, uh, open innovation uh, quirky i i must uh, uh, put here by the way our own osdd open source drug discovery dr brahmachari was a pioneer in that it is unfortunate that we don't have the ecosystem in india when something like pioneering like this has been done it has been pushed aside very unfortunate open research open business models open apis like google maps and finally crowdfunding basically this is a completely new model and these are the things which are changing dramatically so the smartphone that you have in your hand for example it has a combinatorial of data storage digital imaging network capacity coupled with these new uh, sort of uh, uh, features now what is very important is that so far i have talked to you about what technology can do and as you can see as the cost plummet down basically india has a great advantage in using this they don't remain the exclusive domains of uh, the foreigners but they start coming here but while that is doing, being done we must recognize that there is just like there is a technology innovation there are non technological innovation like business model innovation 
system delivery innovation, workflow innovation, process innovation, organizational innovation, policy innovation. And invariably, it is a combination of all these which creates a drama, which creates the game changer. For example, look at uh, uh, JAM. First, there was a policy innovation in terms of Janadhana Yojana on creating bank accounts. All right. And now today we are 300 million plus in a record time. Why? Because there was a technological innovation, Aadhaar, and also we had mobile phones. And the net result of that is uh, the fastest, I would say, uh, and largest financial inclusion in the world. Now, this is a combination of technological innovation, workflow innovation, system delivery innovation, and policy innovation. And if one of these was missing, we would not have been able to make it. So there is this importance. And I would say this is assured. It meets all the requirements. Look at uh, the normal innovation that we talk about. We say getting less performance from less resources. That is Jugar. That is normal, isn't it? You cut costs and create something with less features. And of course, then it will be available for more people. Okay? The new paradigm is getting more performance from less resources for more people. I would say this is MLM 1.0. In fact, I talked about getting more from less for more in 2008 when I was inducted to Australian Academy. They had asked me to give an innovation talk. So I had to make it uh, sound exciting. So I used the terminology Gandhian engineering, getting more from less for more. And in 2008, after I had spoken about this, this went like a wildfire everywhere. And actually, C.K. Prahlad and I wrote a paper on innovation's holy grail, getting more from less for more. Those of you who are interested can read it in July, August 2010. We showed how this can be actually done. And what does it mean for business, the new business that is going to come? I'm very proud to tell you that this has been ranked among the top 10 must-read innovation papers and last July, in a survey, basically, it was ranked as number one. Because this is what the world needs. To an extent, that World Economic Forum, after six months of this paper, they had a half-day session on more from less for more. And Munich last year, 15 November, they had a session on more from less for more. I said, you might wonder why Munich is doing it. Answer is very easy. The refugees are coming. The migrants are coming. They have problems of inequalities. And this is all about getting access equality despite income inequality, right? That's what not only just we need, but they are needing. And of course, those of you who are more interested, uh, please view this uh, uh, TED talk. There are more than half a million views. It is translated in, uh, uh, available in 23 languages. Now, the disruptive innovation is getting far more performance, not 10%, 4 for far less resources for far more people. I would call it MLM 2.0. Are we doing it? Are we capable of doing it? Yes. India excels in this. Take, for example, high quality hepatitis B vaccine. All of you are aware of that. Shanta Biotech, I'm talking about recombinant, you know. That it was 40 times cheaper, $18 to 40 cents. They pushed the prices. Okay? Not 40 percent, 40 times. That is disruptive. High quality cataract eye surgery, 100 times cheaper, not 100 percent, Arvind Aike. Using what? Using assembly line approach, uh, innovation that uh, McDonald has, right? And how they used it. And the same was used in open heart surgery, 20 times cheaper, not 20 percent. High quality artificial foot, Jaipur foot, 300 times cheaper, not 300 percent. Normally, I show a film here, by the way, of a person who runs with a Jaipur foot and does a kilometer in 4 minutes 30 seconds. And then I go around and ask, how many of you can do it? Hardly a finger goes up, a young finger goes up, a young hand goes up, basically. That means I say he is able to beat you by using something that is 300 times cheaper. That is affordable excellence for you. So India is a world leader in this. I think we have special genes by which we are able to do that. So this meets the assured criteria. Now, in order to do that, what do we have to do? We have to change 
the mindset. Supposing there is any new disruptive idea, breakthrough idea that you have, and you create a brainstorming, what will be the first thing people will say? Too risky, not worth it. Second fellow will say, suppose it fails, you are always afraid of failure, we are always afraid of failure. Impossible, never done before. <laughs> this was never done before, this didn't exist 15 years ago, but we have created, no? But never done before. Somebody has tried it already, they will always find out somebody who has actually done it. But supposing you have very good English, but you don't want to show you are scared, you know, let me play devil's advocate. I would suggest, Shashi, that any time you are discussing a new idea, put a board outside the conference room that these five are banned and anybody who utters any one of those will be out. It is only then that we will be able to from leapfrog to pole wall, not otherwise. And it is not just us, by the way. If you see Steve Ballmer of Microsoft has said there is no chance that the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. Everybody is carrying iPhone now. Bloomberg analysts have said iPhone's impact will be minimal. It only appeal to few gadget freak. Nokia and Motorola have nothing to worry about. Nokia has gone down, Motorola has gone down. And Bill, uh, 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 this uh, Tom Watson of IBM chairman, I think there is a word market for maybe five companies. And that's where you require visionary leadership. And that leadership has to be, innovation leader is one who does not know that it cannot be done, all right? because most of us already know that it cannot be done. And innovation leader is one who sees what everyone else sees, but thinks of what nobody else thinks. That is where Nobel Prizes are won. We all see the same data. That's what you are talking about, my paper on anomalies and discontinuities, the joy and fun of science, you know? The outliers, they have deep hidden science which can create new science. That was my lecture, as a matter of fact. Uh, innovation leaders also find opportunities where others see nothing, Converts problems into an opportunity, set quantum goals, drive discontinuity, bet on risky ideas. Now you would say you are a scientist. All right, we hear you have done some risky research, but you have been a science leader. What risk have you taken in your life? Well, I would say that uh, there have been a lot of risks that one has taken, and I'll come to that. But let me end with this first to India, first to the world. Jen Nalika has written a book top 10 achievements of 20th century. It is, of course, subjective. It is what he thinks. Ramanujan is there, Meghna Sai is there, SN Bose is there, Sri Raman is there, Jain Ramchandran, and there is a gap. And then you don't see Atomic Energy Commission, Green Revolution, Space Program, Superconductivity. I'm grateful to him. He has also talked about the CSI transformation to which uh, uh, Ajay Sud actually referred. But these were the people who said first word to the not first word to India, but first word to the science. How do we do it more of it, right? Can you see one thing? There is uh, no Apple here, no Intel equivalent here, huh? no Microsoft here, isn't it? In 100 years, we have, been, uh, we have not been able to do that. But now there is a new hope, Startup India, right? Now, in that Startup India, what is happening? You can see now the valuations of the startups that are coming up and they are increasing day by day. But are they first to the world? I'm sorry. The Paytm that you see here is copy of PayPal, right? The uh, Flipkart, copy of Amazon, right? And so on. You will find Ola, copy of Uber. Of course, they adapted it to Indian conditions. But my desire will be, come on, Let's create the new trillion dollar industry, new billion dollar industry by those exponential ideas which can create ourselves. So we have a long way to go. I think finally the key driver is talent, technology and trust. And I'll tell you our biggest challenge is trust. I'll tell you a little story. Bill Gates I had met uh, eight, nine years ago. I don't know what I'm telling him but he's listening carefully anyway. And we had a dinner come discussion and during that, he told us something very interesting, Ajay. He talked about his being invited to Harvard University uh, for giving the commencement lecture. And there, he declared himself as uh, uh, the most successful dropout that Harvard had. Okay? 
And then he talked about his early experience when he was 19, 20 year old kid. He said there was a company in Albuquerque which was going to manufacture hardware. And he said they will require software, so he called them, knowing that they will keep the phone down. Young fellow, you know, in early days, they didn't keep the phone down. They said, we are not ready, come after a month. And he said, thank God, they said, come after a month, because I did not have the software that I was offering. So they had a trust in him, and he had a trust in himself. How do we build that? If you ask me, our challenge is not budget deficit. It is trust deficit. Think about it, basically. I think that is where we have to actually make a move. I think it's a myth that Indian genes express in Silicon Valley and not in Indus Valley. The reality is that given a challenge, they can express in Indus Valley. They are expressing. You know, it was almost 21 years ago that I gave this talk, India's emergence as a global R&D platform. And Dr. Manmohan Singh was the finance minister, chaired it. And as usual, you know, I have developed the reputation of being a dangerous optimist. Okay, so people discounted that kuch nahi hoga. I'm sorry, I've written a paper 21 years later where one talks about emergence of India as a global R&D platform. There are 1,115 R&D centers here, some employing even 20,000. 360,000 scientists, engineers, and technologists are working here. Creating what? You can see here the number of US patterns that are created, how they have increased. Novel 28%, semantic 24%, G has moved from 1% to 12%. So significant part of that intellectual property is getting generated in India by whom? By Indian minds. But working where? In multinational companies. Okay? That is actually uh, the uh, challenge that we have. How do we make these young people not sit in those centers but work for India's problem? Can we do that? Of course we can do that. For example, solving Indian problems, one of our greatest problems is 200 million illiterates. Can we make them literate in five years? Yes, we had a breakthrough technology, computer-based functional literacy. Based on the theories of cognition, language, communication, emphasize on learning words rather than alphabets. 596 words you recognize as pictures, basically. That was the idea. Method focusing on reading. And you can see it was four times faster. Duration not 200 hours, 45 hours. Not professional teachers, para-teachers. Dropout rate high, low. Spoken and visual medium not possible, possible. And cost very high. This was only just fractional. And we would have made entire country literate in five years. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Why? Because there was an issue about taking this as a mission in the government. And our conventional literacy mission just sort of refused to do that. It would have been absolutely transformative. I think the basic issue, therefore, I'm making before you is that Indian mind is capable of creating such transformative ideas. So these two S's were missing in this case. The rest was all there. Uh, in fact, can India's IQ pole vault in creating global competitiveness? Forget about Indian problems. I mean, we can't forget, but I'm saying in addition. Of course you do, like computer. 2001, when it came, it had technologies like accelerometer, which were later on used by iPhone, by the way. Okay? And things that were used by uh, Samsung in their Galaxy model. I mean, they had this. In fact, I'm very happy to say that Bruce Sterling from New York Times Magazine said the most significant innovation in computer technology in 2001 was not Apple gleaming titanium power back or Microsoft Windows XP. It was a computer, a net link, radically simple, portable computer intended to bring the computer revolution to the world. The best in the world. We are not saying that. The others are saying that. What happened? Why did it not work? Because it could not be scaled and in a sustainable way. Why? Because there was no bold, innovative public procurement policy. And I'm saying for and off innovation. For innovation, we have technology development board, BIRAC, et cetera, et cetera, isn't it? But off innovation. So in other countries, what happens when such breakthroughs take place? They do public procurement. So government becomes the first buyer. So let us say computer. Government had placed an order for 10,000. You can see the difference. In fact, somebody has told me we would have been ahead of China, by the way, in terms of the kind of technologies that were there and so on. It had not happened. 
For innovation, have we had anything bold? Yes, I myself was involved in this New Millennium Indian Technology Leadership Initiative. Biggest public-private partnership. When I left as a DG, there were more than 100 private sector companies and more than 250 institutions working together. Talent, technology, and trust was the basis. Grand challenges seeking game-changing solutions, bold financial instruments. In fact, we said that uh, the risk was so much that we said private sector take money at 0% interest, but work on these big problems, so as to say. Risk was the key. And I remember putting up 10,000 pamphlets, and one of the challenges we had given was uh, the uh, laptop was uh, uh, something like $2,000. Can we make it in uh, $200? Vinay Deshpande actually did it, but did it become a product? No. Finally, it ended up as DSK Mobilis. Okay? High net worth individual, DS Kulkarni, actually sort of bought it. And it is being sold in few thousands. It could have been sold in millions. We are ahead of time. Why again? Because scalability and sustainability was missing. Why again? Because the public procurement for innovation and of innovation. For innovation was done by Nimitli, but of innovation was not done. Today, Ashish Lele is sitting somewhere. Ashish, you are here? Somewhere, yeah. He has created breakthroughs in fuel cell technology. You know, the benchmark is Bellard. He has something which is three times superior to Bellard, but three times cheaper. We are exactly at that point we can take world leadership in fuel cell, again under the Nimitli program. What is required again is government sort of policy. And therefore, if you look at the large scale disruptive innovation, JAM, yes, we had everything, no problem. If you look at Geo, yes, we had everything, no problem. And if you look at CBFL, we failed with regard to these two because there was no government policy. Similarly, if you move forward, the missed opportunities, if you see Simpluda, we had all this, excepting these two were missed. If you look at Mobilis, again we had everything, but a few were missed, and we could have moved way, way ahead. So what has happened is that in the Niti Aayog, and we were talking about Niti Aayog, I mentioned to you, they had called me about two months ago to chair a committee, not chair a committee, a brainstorming session. I don't chair any more committees. Uh, a brainstorming session among the science, technology, innovation leaders about India at 75. Okay? And there, of course, I do chair one committee, that is Swaj Bharat, where we look at technologies which are scalable, sustainable, affordable, uh, rapidly deployable, and socially acceptable. And somebody in that brainstorming say, Dr. Mashalkar committee is no use because it talks about the best technology, but we have to go by L1. And that is where this particular idea of what can we do come. And therefore, I have done a paper on uh, the innovative public procurement policy for fueling assured inclusive innovation. And this will be published in a book by Niti Aayog, The Path Ahead, Anthology of Transformative Ideas for India, because this could be actually transformative. It will come within basically a month. I hope it gets uh, uh, implemented. Uh, I just want to end my lecture in next two, three minutes. Just to remind you of what is assured, I want to tell you that finally it is uh, actually the linkage of several things that matter. Uh, policy uh, deregulation was the trigger, but if handset was $250, it would not have worked. It came down to $25. But supposing it was distributed for $0, would it have worked? No. The call sales were 10 cents per minute. Income is $2. 20 minutes call would have finished it. So that is where the business model innovation came. And the combination of these three worked. I want to emphasize that it is the combination that has uh, always to work. Uh, assured interplay, affordable, scalable, sustainable, this link is obvious. When it is extremely affordable, it becomes extremely scalable, and then it becomes sustainable. And last one, uh, you, I, I use the word rapid, fast. You have to always be distinctive. You have to displace your own product to yourself. Then only your business will sustain, otherwise it will be out. And then only it can reach scales. For example, you see here, during the last few years, so many variants have been brought because iPhone displaces its own model itself. 
So we can't just sit down and say, now I achieved, done. No, sorry. There is no rest. Innovation has to become a way of life. Uh, finally, just quick word, democratization of innovation. Everyone is someone. 1.25 billion are not 1.25 billion mouths, but 1.25 billion minds. And minds on the margin, as Professor Anil Gupta has taught me, are not marginal minds. Every idea matters. How can the science and technology community come to help? There is, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, Pradam Mukherjee, our former president, has given a special place to, in Rashtrapati Bhavan for uh, innovation by the people for the people. And there are some extraordinary ideas. But if science and technology community can join them, they can be moved into the assured category. This is a very interesting photograph, by the way. Uh, Pradam Mukherjee, our former president, when he laid down the office at 8.30 p.m., his final act was to release a book on innovation, by the way. And I met him recently in Ahmedabad. He's very proud that his final act was that. And you can see here, Prime Minister and uh, everybody, Professor Anil Gupta, Executive Vice Chairman of National Innovation Foundation, but he's the uh, sort of power behind it. So there's a commitment. That commitment, as is seen here, it would be wonderful to see it get reflected in the number of things that we talked about so that we really have an assured innovation. Uh, the world-class Indian innovation ecosystem will require physical, intellectual, and cultural constructs. The physical will be education research institutions like this one, incubators. I'm very happy uh, Saurav was telling me about the incubators. Uh, accelerators, technology parks, and not venture capital, adventure capital. Our venture capital tends to be vulture capital. How do we change that? Government, society, public procurement, robust IPR, balanced regulatory systems, etc. If that happens, then we'll have innovation-led, accelerated growth, and then India will emerge as a leader in assured innovation. And then we'll not only discover, we'll innovate and make in India. Make in India is not assembled in India. You know, this iPhone, Foxconn makes it, 4.5 million jobs in China are created. Okay? How much Foxconn takes away? $10. How much Apple takes away? $350. So we have three choices. Ajay. One is sweat it out, get $10, but get 4.5 million jobs. Other is use this, get that $350, but few jobs. I would say do both, as a matter of fact. That's the new India that we want to create. And I'd like to end by finishing my uh, Jayani Tata lecture where I had said finally, it is only this innovative India that will signal to the rest of the world that we are not a hesitant nation, unsure of our place in the new global order, but a confident one that is raring to go and be a leader in the Committee of Nations. Thank you. This has been, you will all agree, has taken us to a different intellectual uh, level extremely uh, exciting, thoughtful, and also full of hope. I see that in uh, all the things you said with a, a word of caution at many places. Please join me in giving him a standing uh, ovation. Oh, right. Thank you. And before I uh, do that, let me do the honors of oh. giving him a memento on your behalf. And uh, this is such a pleasure that we could have you, Mr. Dr. And like any our Indian tradition, thank you. This is thank you. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. So really nice. Thank you.